You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. I've never, I have never, ever stayed with a church for four days. Never. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not special. I'm nothing. The only thing is that I don't have the patience to stay for four days. I can I can give uh, one day, and then the next day I minister a bit and go. But uh, the, the 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 hotel is clean and good, and the environment is. Once I enter my room, I don't move to anything anywhere else. I don't I don't leave that compartment. I stay till you come for me. I feel so fulfilled that, that there is nothing I need in town. I don't need to go to any shop in town. Do you know why? I'm asking you. <laughs> Every provision has been made for me in that hotel. <laughs> by you. By you. By you. I have cucumber drink reduced to drink. You haven't heard about it. <laughs> I had all sorts. I have fresh bread. I have granite. I have peanuts. Okay? I have uh, refreshments. I have apples. I have banana. And I have all levels of drinks. No, you spoil me. You spoil me. You spoil me. I might not come back because of the way you treat me. man of 77 shouldn't eat much and I don't eat you can, you can ask me the closest person the PA around me I eat very little but you you, you you're coming with food that is meant for about five or six people what do you expect me to do I just want to thank God for your lives. Thank God for your daddy, my son. This is how ministry is done. This is it. And I know that you are, you are on a journey. You are, you are headed for somewhere. And you will get there. Those of you who are students in this in this uh, environment, you will not forget here. When you finish and go, you still know where you are where you are you are molded. You never know what God can do. You never know the branches that will spring up. And this is ministry. Because on uh, when did I come here? Thursday. On Wednesday, I called a great man of God, Jukudi Obweli. I called him and said, "I am going to to Ebony. See, where are you going? We have a very, very um, interesting relationship." One day he blessed me. I just couldn't believe it. I didn't know he was prepared. And I came to the hotel 
they asked me, say, Let, hey, see me in the hotel, see me in the hotel. I went to the hotel to see him, to see him, and there were many minutes that he called me outside, and he said, pray, I'm going for a meeting, and we prayed, and he gave me an envelope, and as soon as the driver moved, I opened the envelope. I wanted to know what's there. So they check. I won't tell you how much is in the check. But I said, wow. I got home and showed my wife. Known him over the year of his wedding. I should tell you something. And some other, um, strange and bizarre things in our relationship. I told him, I'm going out to Ebony. He said, where? I said, to a man that you know. He said, who is that? And uh, I told him. And this is what he said. And I'm glad to say that to you. He said, go there. He's a good man. He's just finishing a meeting in Oka. Is that true? Yes, of course. We are going to be a bit uh, step into ministry in this morning session. Because unless you understand ministry, you can't receive of God favor. You might be here walking against the interests of this ministry and praying that God will bless you. Hmm. I have very, very, very strong words for you and I want you to get ready. Remember that scripture. It simply says, if you can take care of what is another man's who will give you your own remember I told you that when God created man he made man in his own image man had his spirit and then he went down to make man actually he created man but he made them the original translation he made them male and female after creation and we already know that he packaged them in two containers the male man and the female man I want to clear something today very very clear you know when you hear of apostles or you, when you hear of uh, bishops and you see a woman bishop or a woman apostle some people feel like strange how is it I'm going to show you before we get in because I want to assure I want to assure certain people here the female men, uh, men here that God knows about you and you can rise to any level in ministry prepare to be a bishop an apostle, a general manager, a president of a nation, a chief executive of any um, business. Now, turn your Bibles to Romans 16 and we'll read from verse 5. Likewise, Greet the church that is in their house. You're talking about baby. 
salute my well beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruit of Akai, Akaya, unto Christ. Six. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Next. Salute Andronicus and Junior, my king's men and my fellow prisoners who are among who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. It's a name that stands out there. Junior. Junior is not the name of a male. It's a female. And what you have here. Junior. Andronicus. And Junior. My king's men. You don't have king's women. It's nothing like that. A female is still your king's man by the language. So don't you say junior is a man? No, a king's man is a is a description of relationship. And my fellow prisoners who were of note among the apostles, I put it to you a junior was an apostle woman apostle of note today we didn't we, we hardly refer to junior and there are juniors here that's what he told me you will make it in your own field you will rise to the level God wants you to rise that's a point to make that clear point I will make is in Genesis chapter 3 I think verse uh, 7 Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 they ate you know and the eyes of them put Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig trees together and made themselves aprons. Eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, of the Lord God, amongst the trees of the garden. I come to to this revealing verse 9. And the Lord God called on Adam and, and said unto him, Where art thou? Adam, where are thou? Where are you? I want to bring to you this morning that there's a lot to this question. Everywhere you are and everything you're doing, every level of your activities here on earth, there is always a question that is around, where are you? Where are you? And I know, looking at you, I know you are, you are wondering from what angle. I will tell you. This question is not about location. The 
Because if you say that God doesn't know where you are standing or where you are headed to or where you are living, then you are making a mistake. He's an all-knowing God. The question here it's not about location but about your situation in that place where you are. He may ask you, where are you? When he sees the activities you are involved with in, in, in church or at school. Where are you? And he can quickly, and I'm not talking about your location because I'm where are you in all these things? Where are you in the activities in church? You are an usher. He knows you are an usher. But where are you? What is the level of your commitment? What and what can you say about the assignment given to you? Where are you? Where are you in the assignment given to you? Where are you in the ministry he relates in you? And that's why we come this morning to preach and discuss about the marks and signs and evidence of true spiritual sons. All of you are sons. The mark and signs of true spiritual sons. There are clear marks and signs and evidence that let believers know if they are two sons of the ministry or two sons of their father. The evidence is always true. It's always clear. I make my first point. Two sons have and are passionate Two sons love and are passionate about their father's vision. This church has a vision. Are you passionate about it? You know, let me tell you again that there are processes and rewards that sons go through as they serve God. You can't avoid it. There are pains. There are pains of sonship. You need to go through the pains of sonship. Because sonship is expensive and it costs you something. We must stay in love with the vision of your daddy and the vision bearer of the church and the vision of the kingdom as well. When you have something going, you think about it. In your marriage, you think about, about it. You can't be in church and not thinking about it be in church and not reviewing the the, uh, the mission and the mandate. True sons serve their father's vision with joy. Number two point. If you don't have joy then you don't belong. Their father's vision uh, it's never a mere task but remains a pleasurable task true sons do not operate the ministry in carelessness John chapter 4 verse 34 remember that scripture that we took out 
if you are not faithful in another man's who will give you your own who will give you your own you are careless in what belongs to another man in another man's uh, call you are careless who will put a call in your life and have people do it with you see Jesus was speaking Jesus said unto them my meat my nourishment is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work and to accomplish it that's my menu that's my meat that's what I enjoy do it accomplish it what is your meat what is your meat what is your nourishment I ask you what is it that nourishes you Jesus was expressing his joy in doing the father's will he said what pleases me what sustains me what I live on is to do his will and I don't do it half and half I finish it I accomplish it Jesus you can't stay in church and be a prodigal prodigal child you want to get and go and spend The marks and signs and evidence of a true spiritual son. Some sons are, are, let me find the right word. They think they are clever. But they don't know that their father has existed before them. There are things sons do. And we see that father, we just smile and pass away. Some sons even think that they are cleverer. They are more intelligent. They think they are more anointed than their father. May not be the portion here, but I'm telling you the truth. What you climb on top of five story building to see your father sees it at the floor level let's say when you move you think you are guiding the situation your father knows the fathers read body language a lot Jesus said in Psalm 69 verse 9 For the zeal of the house that eaten me up the reproaches of them that reproach thee has fallen upon me the zeal the zeal not the zeal for um, anything else but the seal of thy house has eaten me up. I can't sleep. I can't rest until I do it for you. And the reproaches of them that reproached you are fallen upon me. I suffer because I love you. What they did to you, they are now doing it to me. That is the feeling of a true son. A true son is a son that feels the heartbeat of his father. I've made two points. And I'm going to rush now. I have it all laid out. Number three. If true sons are willing to sacrifice for their father's vision. They are willing to sacrifice. What have you sacrificed? You know what is called sacrifice? Something you do that is painful. It's painful, not painful. 
Because some of the things that you do, you call sacrifice. It's gainful for you. Sacrifice proceeds from tears, pain. Oh, it hurts. But I've got to do it for the kingdom. I don't know if I can afford it. But I can, I, I, I've got to give it for the kingdom. That's the spirit of sacrifice. And the sons ought to understand that they never lose the sacrifice for their father. You will never lose. You will never lose. By and by, you will never lose. Yes. What you sacrifice into is what you later grow into. If you make your sacrifice in the service of God, you will grow in the service of God. As you sacrifice and walk with your leader, there is transference of his best going out to you. Why you people in church don't get the spirit of the pastor? They might pretend. They might sing a song. They might pretend to be like him, but they never get it. Daddy has got the spirit of the man who brought him up. If you're outside and he's leading in worship, you think it is Chukudi Ogweli that is here singing. And when he's talking, you think he's him. Am I saying anything strange? Oh. Number, number four. Two sons cover their father's weaknesses. Oh. You think your father does not have a weakness? Leaders are not perfect. And in fact, you yourself, you are not perfect. And there's no one that is perfect. So what are we talking about? You cover your leader's weakness. I don't care what it is. Whether it is sin, whether it is a kind of uh, carelessness, what you are ordered to do is to cover it. Joshua's sons expose their father. They kill their father. They kill the ministry. Sons are supposed to be established in covering their fathers. First of all, there are two levels of covering. Covering in things of the spirit and covering him physically. You need to see your, see your protocol, how they, they follow me. I was just wondering how they do to him. They won't allow me carry my, my notes. They open the doors and one in front, one at the back. The first night they were on sentry. My hand above sentry, sentry. They were standing at the door of my room. Stand my foot. They are there. I said, are you guys going to remain here? They said yes. Stay here until we move out. And you couldn't see me unless they clear you. True sons protect their father. Not only covering, they protect. Num- number six or whatever. True sons become their father's 
spokesman in seasons of attack. Attack will come. I've never seen any ministry. Oh, anyway, you are just, uh, you are just two years. Get ready. Get ready. It will come. Don't ever say, I will never, be. attack must come. When attacks come, it proves your ministry. When you are mature for a certain attack, it will come. And God will be looking at you to know how you handle it for the next level he is bringing. Help your leader by doing what you are assigned to do. Do it. Then quiet, do it. Instrumentalists, do it. Ushers, just do it. The next point is true. Sons are willing to endure persecution on behalf of their father or their ministry. True sons, so only true sons. The rest, as soon as persecution comes, they run. They deny the ministry. Real sons endure persecution because they know it's of the devil. Persecution. In short, let me tell you, Christian work is not a bed of roses. Even if you have roses, there are thorns around them. And so, that is why it is very important that we understand and have revelation of persecution so that you don't shrink back from sonship. I served a man of God for years. I supported the church. Don't please pardon me. For I, 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 I. And I'm telling you simply what I did. God energized me to do. God used me to package that church. At the time that churches were not doing anything. My wife and I were buying things. Buying keyboards. Buying guitars. When we were buying guitar, they were, they were called electric guitar. Electric guitar. We were buying buses. We were paying for crusades. That time, uh, like uh, uh, 4,000 pounds, we would do a crusade. We were doing everything. We were hosting uh, visitors from abroad in our house. There was a time eight white people stayed in our home. And we were, we were serving them our food. And remember, we served them ice fish. And they loved it so much. We didn't know we were preparing for ministry. We just took joy in service. True sons are established in commitment. I can, I can stay on commitment for the next one hour. But we are not going to do that. Commitment uh, is not shallow commitment. But deeper Christian commitment. When you put the word Christian in any strong word, it gets stronger. Forgiveness. Total Christian forgiveness. is not ordinary forgiveness. Commitment. Committed to the program of the church. Committed to the uh, immediate uh, planned activities of the church. Committed to night vision. I spoke to our branches by three o'clock. Three o'clock I spoke to our branches that are having uh, 
night of um, encounter and uh, speaking to the womb I spoke to them I called through and the pastor said daddy daddy I said put your microphone there in the midst of the service I shouted hallelujah everybody was like wow where is he why because I'm committed to the call God has given me wherever I am I'm still committed to the kingdom work finished with one branch, went across to the other branch. And this morning by six, on that branch that is having their own, uh, between now and between six and nine o'clock, called me because they heard I had spoken somewhere. And I did speak. Commitment. What I told the, the headquarter branch, I must repeat to others so as to carry them this is July July is the seventh month of the year seven is the number of perfection and completion in things of God this July is July and this July will not lie to you and I, I challenged them. I said, somebody stand up and shout, yeah. Which they did. Prophesied over them. Why? Trying to build up their commitment with my own commitment. The songs that understand commitment are rooted and it attracts blessing in fact favor from God and seasons will come when it will be time to reward songs true songs are committed whether in pain or in uh, uh, what celebration they are still committed in things that they are doing. They are committed to see to the end. They are committed to, to have good results. Good success. I make the next one. True sons rely. The true sons truly desire their father's vision to be successful two sons two sons are not in competition with their father you know in a church there is a father and there is a mother the a female man the wife of a pastor is standing like the, the male man in church. No matter how young she is, she is mama. <laughs> I say no matter how young your pastor's wife is, she is your mama. If you like, senior her by 50 years. True sons begin to develop the hearts of their father. The idiosyncrasies, the manners of their father. True sons want to share in the burden of their father. I'm, talking, I'm still talking about um, desire to see the vision succeed. What is the desire of a father in ministry? It's success. Success. And my earliest definition of success in ministry is this. I don't know whether I mentioned it here, but 
I wrote it down in my notes for you. God taught me that success is finding God's will for your life and doing it. If you don't know God's will for your life, you can never be successful. You beat about the bush. If you say it's by the will of God that you are sent to a ministry, then you have found the will of God and you need to do it and get blessed. Beloved, true sons protect their father. I've said it in a way. But here, this protection is all round protection. I know in ministry, I don't say it's very right. But you can't say something against that, the head of that ministry and walk away. They will, they will almost kill you. Yes. I was one of those criticizing that attitude until I learned that what is driving them is love and commitment. Why should you be against my father? What has Satan against you? What? <laughs> A little sip cool down my, my throat. Commit your works to the Lord. I'm talking scripture. Proverbs 16.3 And He will establish it. His name is Jesus. Sing it for me. His name is Lord. His name is Lord. Everybody lend your voice to it. Your name is Come on, sing it out. Sing it out. ministry in the next 30 years probably no we 
there will be a time inside this ministry God will call somebody but the father there has to release you he's gambling many ministers have gambled they don't know what is killing them some of them die suddenly some of them their children die some of them their family perish because of disobeying simple ministry ethics ministerial ethics to say you live without being sent off you go on stealing you steal from that ministry you whisper to the people secretly you will not visit the, the ministry but you keep calling to bring people out of where you left I know your daddy had his background at Dominion City Tomorrow you will see Dominion City people here. Why? Because he was properly pleased. He has a clean conscience. His daddy said to me, he's a good man. What would they say about you? Why you? lost count the point I've made I can't, I can't count but I want to make a point now true sons want to serve in the ministry of their father for a long time standing with left leg ready to step out from the first day it's no good There are people that are needed in ministry so badly. See these people. They know them in town. Oh. Ah. And they are, they are attempting every time to lure them out. Because they are special gifts wherever they are. But they are gifts sent to a special place. And they must submit to that place. Some don't know. I offer, offer 100,000. They drop everything and, and go. But it's a blessing, yes, that never lasts. That attracts problems. You soon buy a car you can maintain. And the car will be giving you trouble. You don't know why. It's because you are not where you are supposed to be. And then you begin to prophesy terrible prophecies in the car. Because the car stopped you on the road. Or because there was noise proceeding from somewhere. You say, ha, this guy, you go kill me one day. <laughs> That's your word. It will kill you. One man said that not within one week he crashed and died and uh, when he stood li in line at the angel was receiving the arrival he came there 
this is a story. Don't look at me like that. He came there and said, Angel, I want to ask you one thing. I was involved in ministry. How is it that uh, I'm coming home? The angel said, what? This, you got what you said because of what you did. You said something and you got it. You said, in fact, this car will kill me one day. And the car killed you one day. Because you have no shame, you have no discipline, you have no commitment. You took what you cannot maintain. Two sons know that the, the father is not their rewarder. Their, their, their rewarder is father in heaven. God is their rewarder. They never look on their leader to reward them. But their leader, the leaders do reward sons from time to time. Buy them phones, give them cash. Because there are leaders that don't depend on your tithe or your offering. There are leaders that are raised. They become leaders over cities and over locations. So forces in the location come to kneel. And so he has, he has abundance. And where it goes, these two sons close by. Son does something. He says, Sonny, come. How are you? But it's not, it's not a, a, a route you should always look to. Sons are supposed to bless their fathers too. However little. That was the time in our church, they used to give one whole bridge of uh, recharge cards. It was, it was uh, uh, a custom. They don't give you one. They give you the whole. I think they are, they are usually 14 or so. They give it to you. You just open it and you have cards. Amen. 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 Do your own. Yagen Meloke in your life. I have very few points and I'll round our I'll, I'll finish. Sons are content with the position their father places them. Several sons are funny. They think they can rule their father. Their father makes an adjustment posting and uh, relocation and they are angry. And their father is there before they came home. You can't leave a congregation. What if you are needed somewhere? No. Hey, two sons are never too familiar with their fathers. You will you will hear and see something that will blow your head off. If you become too familiar, you see things that can destroy you. You should give a space. If you become too familiar with your father, you can no more receive from your father. He becomes common to you. The do fathers have a way, especially when they are getting old at 77. <laughs> They like to um, receive and carry everybody on and encourage people. 
and some crazy sons, some bad sons, exploit them. Don't worry, daddy will agree. Daddy will agree. Let's put it this way. So daddy does not have his own thinking. He must agree. Let us pray that daddy shut up your mouth. That daddy is led of God. God instructed him about gathering of the saints and he's obedient. And you walk in from, from side doors and you, you begin to say silly things like that. One day you see that daddy in a mood that you never know he is. You just face you and say, hey, 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 stand up there. Before you know it, he will order something you cannot believe. Jesus. You know, true songs always hold the opinion of their father. The opinion, the ministry rules. All ministries cannot be the same. Redeem is different from deeper life. Deeper life is different from assemblies, from chosen. So this one, don't come to tell us, this is how they do it there. This is there. This one is our own. That one is there. yourself and fit him in here. Don't tell me about there. God has not told me about to do like there. God told me to do like here. And therefore, if you can't fit in here, well, you better go to there where you think you should be. Well, what are you doing here? True sons inquire from their father. They ask questions before taking decision. Not after taking decision, they come. You decided whom to marry and you bring him. Who told you to do that? Did you consult your daddy? You have, you have accepted the appointment in Lagos because of what is promised. Did you consult your daddy you have seen a lady to marry before we say Jack Robinson you have already entered the the village and concluded things and he said daddy I'm, I'm, daddy, I'm glad to tell you that shut up the foundation is wrong it's bad who are you are who are your supporters spiritually? The one I receive also, uh, anyway, is this. I'm not your pastor. I'm not your daddy. I'm just an elder in the city. You come knocking at my door with somebody that is blinking her eyes like mommy water. <laughs> and I look at you immediately and say, Wait it. Now wait it. <laughs> <laughs> then he, he starts scratching his head. I just I come to. Then he brings a bottle of wine. He thinks that that bottle of wine will make me not to speak the truth. He drops a bottle of wine as if it's something. He carries the wine. I come to see you because uh, we are getting married next week. Ah. <laughs> hey, that's good. Have you seen your pastor? Does your pastor know about it? Give me his phone. I'll call. Me, I'm not your pastor. I'm just an elder in the city. Sometimes they say eh, because of this and that. As we leave this place, <laughs> we are going to see my pastor. Huh? Jesus. Meanwhile, you look at the girl. 
on a tabia near Kamami water. And what he's saying, let us walk out of this place so before this man convinces this other man to, to withdraw. <laughs> and I say that, are you going to pray for us? Oh yes, so I will pray for you. And I won't reject the I take the wine because this, <laughs> this thing called wine, I have never spent money to buy it. For as long as I've been in ministry, I've never paid for a bottle of wine. And if you come to my house, you have cartons of it. Cartons, cartons, cartons. So I'll take it. When he gives, when he brings a, 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 a wine that is expensive, you know those ones that below is round like that, he will present it in a special way for me to see. I'm giving you special wine for this. And some foolish ones would then come with their invitation cards. <laughs> Would you pray for us, Daddy? Daddy, pray for us. Kneel down quickly. Kneel down, <laughs> Father. Behold these people <laughs> and what they are doing. <laughs> if you are in this state, let them go. If you are not in this, you know what to do. Amen and amen. And. The young man says amen. The lady says mm-hmm. So, consult your daddy before making life changing and major life decisions. There's a man I had to make a decision. He never forgets. He's a big man. He wanted to leave his job as a bank manager. Another bank was offering something very lucrative. I called him and said, don't leave. He said, why? Daddy, why not? I said, don't leave. This thing, this thing has no, has no, has no bone in it. That's what I'm receiving. Don't leave. He said, Daddy, I will do this thing you said. But see what they are offering. I said, don't leave. He stayed there. Three months after they promoted him. Next few months, they gave him a higher position. Then after one year, he's in that position. The bank, they come again. You know them. How they, they steal from one another. They came again and said, now, we want you to come. He came and asked me. I said, yes. This is the time to accept. And when he left as a manager, they made him an area manager and gave him three states to control. The two sons receive counsel from the father and enjoys favor from God. I know the Bible says he that findeth a wife findeth what? Eh? And obtain it what? It's with advice, so <laughs> you can't find nothing. Because I've seen on Facebook one woman that they told before. They showed me the woman before, and then they showed her after. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> come before and after not the same just, it's just a matter of one week how come yes we are coming to an end now two songs receive and are open to the father's correction. Who will correct you if not your father? Who? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The father in part corrects, but in parts by laying on of hands and speaking the words, the true.
دوستانز چیزیز This is a special session and I will, I will stop and pause here and I will take questions practical to ask a little question. So for us, Take it a big one if you like. <laughs> or a ministry and then we happen to lose or one of our brother or sister or maybe two of them step three or five but fight for us to still keep a very strong bond, a strong connection with them, to keep relating with them often. Is it right for okay. us? Okay. Uh, two, three of Maybe uh, brother or sisters, the lead. Eh? Uh-huh. Is it right to continue to keep? Uh, mind the words that you use. Do you want to hear? Is it right to use? I mean, to continue connection or strong connection? Connect. All right. It depends on the circumstances of their living. Suppose they were transferred away maintain contact. Do you understand what I mean? Suppose they went back to school. They left and their school now is in no more here but in Port It doesn't affect your contact with them. Because probably when they are around they will come see you. But when they have left with scandal and gossip you better not entangle yourself in the next level of the gossip because you don't know whom they are calling on phone to get information about what you know some people leave and they don't want to leave the church they leave but they meddle in the church they meddle in the life of people sister Agnes hmm how that on a church day, Seb? It's not wickedness. Ah, silly. Some need some ministries where their their strength resides. So it is impossible for them to leave. They left, but they haven't left. They are still monitoring you. Especially on Facebook. When you do something, they are best to go and like what you are doing. Simply to tell you that they are here. They are still around. They determine to follow you. So you need to be wise and know what to do. The circumstances of departure determines the level of relationship if any that you maintain for your own good the pastor who releases people keeps relationship with them as much as possible some pastors release people with pain in their heart so in order not to increase the pain he will stay away so it varies and some members lose their friendship because somebody picked up a quarrel or picked up um, a scandal or picked up uh, an unnecessary complaint and they leave. And while they are leaving, they are, they, are, they are campaigning for more people to leave. That is satanic. That is dangerous. Don't you ever have anything to do with that person. Because they will try to 
confuse you. If God called you in a place and and uh, some people leave, stay there. And some people, some other people will come. Ask questions. I won't be here next week. Or ask questions now. What is the scripture you are, you are, you are, that is in your in your heart? Hmm? Put it now. You know it. Can somebody help her? Yes. Yes. No, no, no. That scripture. That's a scripture. About teachers and, and fathers. Hmm? Yes. But the question is this, and somebody have two fathers. Technically, you have one father. And that one father is your father by virtue of what you've been through with him. But then, because you are grounded, you also have fathers in the city and fathers in the nation. You can't deny them. Fatherhood. I want to make this thing very, very clear to you. In life, you have a father. A biological father. But are there no other people you regard as father? There are. I went to House on the Rock in Abba. And Pasane was brought up in Rock Family Church. But he went to work in Lagos. He arrived in Lagos and he saw a bus, House on the Rock. He ran after them and said, Is it Rock Family Church? I haven't seen this. They said, No, this is House on the Rock. He said, I'm coming from Rock Family Church. They said, no, this is house on the rock. He said, where is it? They told him. He went there and worshipped. Of course, we didn't have a branch in Lagos. But he worshipped and worshipped and worshipped and worshipped and worshipped and worshipped and worshipped worshipped until he worshipped himself into house on the rock. And now he's a senior pastor of house on the rock. In Abba. His branch has about 150 men. Men that are men. So they, they are having their, their um, men's celebration for the first time. And he said to them, I'm going to invite my father. The one who, who showed me some and people I knew were getting confused and he told them I have two fathers the father over our ministry and one father that gave me life and made me to do this thing I'm doing here for him there are circumstances under which 
the foolish son has hundred fathers in the city. Anywhere a man of God comes and there is uh, something special, they, they will go. <laughs> they will book appointment and go. They go to a hotel and knock at his door. They touch the protocol. He said, this is foolishness. But one day, Lord will ask you, Adam, where are you in all this? Who is your father? I have stayed away from controversy on this. My dear child, Yes, practically. You may have a father, but you may also have a father because of his position. I was a leader in Pierre. They call me Papa. Ministers in Enugu. If I call sons gathering, I have it on Facebook, the gathering of sons, they all son does not mean I'm your father. And the fact that you say you call me father does not mean that you are my son. Because some sons call father, 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 father and they don't mean it. Some fathers will just say, say son, son, come here. What? Which kind of son? Son where? Do you know him? Do you know his name? Do you know his brother? has become a free word. But I've given you points now so that you can identify yourself whether you are a real son. Real son is different. Things of the spirit you have the, that father to listen to. For example, he will tell you not to marry him or not to marry him. The reason why he's saying is because there's another person that is very rich. And he wants you to marry. But you prayed with your pastor. And he said, I see you in this union. I'm going ahead. Yeah. You are, you are, you are, you are biological father. Said, I come out of the rock pile. If you will die, well, that other one cannot say that. It is not disobedience. It is moving with the Spirit of God. Has your father ever told you about marriage contrary to what your pastor is telling you? They don't know anything. They can't listen to your, to your dad in church. <coughs> I had a pastor in town Enugu, who was visiting our church but not our member. And he was getting close to me. And my brother in the United States of America met the sister. And they got engaged. So the man was very close. One day, he traveled to Lagos didn't come to church because we're not sure when he would come. He went to Winners, Winners uh, Peak Conference. And after that, he applied for counseling. This is what happened in the counseling room with Oyedepo came in put his fat down and he would listen to him after that he said go back he even applied to be his son 
they applied. Consider me as your son, sir. After this, I'm this, I'm this, I have this, I have that. Very able said, But you are coming from a nook. And you are not uh, 18 years old. You are already 30 something. You have been amazed. You must have father in a nook. There is a father there. Where do you worship? Before you go, I have to read him. Say, please, I don't want to waste time. Go back. Go back to that man where you regularly watch. Go back. There he is your father. And he came to me and told me this story, crying, lying flat at the altar, crying. And I received him. And I thought, let's build a relationship. And when we started, two weeks later, I had a phone call by 2 a.m. Please, come to this so-and-so hospital. Someone mentioned you and we know you. And that one is dead. You are the only person he called his name. I didn't know who. So, I just rushed, drove out to Zeke Avenue, went up to the hospital. And they had covered him. I said, remove this thing. I removed and I went, ah, ah. Pastor, what are you doing here? He's dead. You know what happened? I had to tell the church the whole story. And we took up responsibility. We carried him. Since I was related to him, I traced the rest of the relatives. And his newly married one. And we went and sacrificed a lot to bury him. Don't have fake fathers. If God loves you, He'll take you away from fake fathers and give you your real. If you are a real son and God loves you, He will take you away from your fake fathers and give you a real father. Because circumstances are coming when you know who is really your father. I don't have time. I would have mentioned to you how to recognize what fatherhood means. Apostleship in the body of Christ. You've been transformed by the wonders of God's Word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 0806-499-5029, 0812-511-3214. Princeton Hills Ministries. Raising global leaders.